In this problem, we have a skier who is skiing at some velocity and then approaches a slope of some distance and moves up the slope for some distance before stopping due to the friction. I'm going to say that the angle of the slope is theta and the distance that the skier travels up the slope I'm going to label as d, which is the 15 meters given to us by the problem. Another variable I'm going to define right off the bat here is the final height of the skier, which is going to be useful to us later. I'm talking about the vertical height that the skier will have once it reaches its final position, like the vertical height to the ground. I'm going to label this variable as y, and we can see, using some basic trigonometry, that this is going to be equal to d times the sine of theta. Since we're dealing with a change of height here, we can see that this problem is mainly about energy, but since friction is relevant, we first want to talk about the forces to figure out what that friction is. So let's draw a force diagram to take a look. First things first, since we're on an incline, I'm going to use a tilted coordinate axis, the one we typically use for problems like this. And now let's go through those forces. First off, on the skier, there's going to be the downward force of weight acting down with a magnitude of mg. Perpendicular to the incline, there's also a normal force acting upwards on the skier. And parallel with the surface of the slope, there is a force, a frictional force, acting against the skier's motion. Because the skier can't move along our defined y-axis, we can set its net force in the y-axis equal to zero which will help us analyze those forces. There is a normal force acting on the skier in the positive direction, and opposing that is the y component of the weight, which is going to be equal to mg times the cosine of theta. We can use this expression to get a formula for the normal force as being equal to mg times the cosine of theta. This is useful to us because we want to find the magnitude of the frictional force to solve this problem. And the frictional force, by definition, is equal to the normal force times the coefficient of friction, which in this case is going to be the coefficient of kinetic friction. So our formula for that force is just taking the kinetic friction coefficient and multiplying it by the expression we found earlier, mg times the cosine of theta. Now let's switch gears for a bit and talk about energy. The way we solve energy problems is by looking at, looking at two different points in the problem and looking at how the energy has converted over time. So at this point in the problem, I'll call it point one, the point just before the skier starts moving up the slope, the skier's altitude has not changed and it's only moving with some speed without potential energy. I'll define point two to be the point where the skier has reached the top of its motion when it's reached rest and now has achieved its maximum height. Because energy is conserved, the initial forms of energy should be equal to the final energy. Because energy is conserved, the total amount of energy that the skier has initially should be equal to the final ones, assuming that work isn't being done on the skier to make it lose some of that energy. At point one, the skier has some speed, so it's got some kinetic energy, which is defined to be 1 half mb squared, one-half times the skier's mass times the square of its speed, and I'll say its potential energy at that point is zero, because it hasn't changed heights yet. At point two, it's at rest, so there is no kinetic energy, but now that its height has changed, it has gained some potential energy. And potential energy is defined as mass times g times the height of the skier at that point, which I defined earlier to be y, and therefore can be better written as d times the sine of theta. Now there is one final consideration to be made. Not all of the skier's original kinetic energy will be converted into potential energy because work is being done on the skier by the friction as it moves up the slope. This means that some of the skier's energy is going to be converted into heat energy or sound energy or something else and isn't mentioned in the problem or quantified. But since work is equal to force times distance, we can say that this term is equal to the frictional force times d. Let's write this formula again, but in a more complete way. So the kinetic energy is equal to the potential energy plus the coefficient of friction times mg cosine theta times d. Now let's try simplifying this. 
We have mass in every single one of these terms, so they can all cancel out. And now you might notice that in this equation, every variable is known or given except for the one we're trying to find. So what we need to do now is algebraically solve for the coefficient of friction. We can start doing this by getting the term that has the coefficient on its own. So let's subtract both sides of the equation by this term, like this. And now let's get the coefficient completely on its own by dividing both sides of the equation by g cos theta d. And now we have this equation, where the coefficient is equal to 1 half v squared minus gd sine theta all over gd cosine theta. Now if you want, you can pull out your calculator, type in all, the, type in all this stuff using the information we're given in the problem, and there's your answer. Though I'm also going to point out real quick, for the sake of the people who really like simplification and making your equations as pretty as possible, that we can simplify this a little bit, or at least write it in a little different way, by splitting this formula up into two terms that are both divided by gd cosine theta. So in the first term we'd have v squared, with the 2 in the denominator, along with gd cosine theta, and then minus gd sine theta over gd cos theta, where the gds both cancel out, and the sine of theta over cosine of theta is by definition tan theta. So the end result is this equation, which looks a little cleaner and neater than what we originally had. Nevertheless, though, when we plug in our givens, so when we plug in 11 meters per second for v, and 19 degrees for theta, and 15 meters for d, and 9.8 meters per second squared for g, then we find an answer, we find a coefficient of about 0 0.091, with no units. So that is the coefficient in this problem. I hope this video helped you out. If it did, please consider subscribing if you want to support me in making more videos like this. If you have any questions, please leave a comment down below. And if you have any requests, don't hesitate to share those as well. That's all for this video, and I hope you have a lovely day. Bye-bye.